Hello, Clearly Essential team. This is Crystal Garvin. Thanks so much for joining us for our third Monday business training. Same time, same place, um, the third Monday of each month at 9 p.m. Eastern. I'm joining you from Central Time tonight. I am in Texas spending some time with my in-laws for Thanksgiving week, and I hope you're all having a great start to your Thanksgiving week. We have BOGOs going on, as I know you're all aware, and I am excited. I know all of us are really excited about BOGOs this week, and thank you just for taking some time to build into yourself and to train yourself and learn along with everyone tonight about a really cool topic that I'm excited to have a guest speaker introduce tonight for us. And so once again, I'm Crystal Garvin, and I am your diamond leader for Clearly Essential team. And tonight I have asked a friend of mine, Cindy Martin, to train us on a topic that I find really intriguing, millennials, who they are, and how to engage them. Let me tell you just a little bit about Cindy. She is the CEO of Smarten International and the Smarten Center for Professional Excellence. You can find out more about her at www.cindymartin.com, and it is Cindy with an S, so S-I-N-D-Y, Martin, and her business name again is Smarten International. She is a speaker, author, trainer, and coach. And we were honored to have her at our recent elite retreat down at Camp Walter Johnson in Denton. She did an excellent job talking to us about professionalism. She's kind of known as Ms. Etiquette in her circles. And I think it's really important that we all do think about how we're presenting ourselves and our professional demeanor uh, and being confident is a lot of what she talked about as well, which we know is important when we are meeting with new people, introducing our oils and other products to people, helping other team members get started with their businesses. It was excellent and I am really thankful she was able to do that and I asked her if she would join us for a webinar too and I saw this topic on her list of topics that she trains on. I thought this would be so great for us and we get questions all the time about crossing those generational barriers that sometimes we allow to get in our way. Um, Cindy, by the way, provides programs and coaching to Fortune 500 companies, universities, national conferences. She's appeared as a featured guest on radio and TV programs. She's also an author. She's written articles for various newspapers, magazines, and online publications. And she also has written two books, Smarten Up Your Professionalism in 365 Tweets, and Are You a Duck, an Elephant, or a Mouse? How Are You Perceived When You Walk Into a Room? And that was really interesting to hear more about at our retreat. Cindy is married to Bob Martin. They have two children and two dogs, and they live in High Point, uh, North Carolina. So I am an, almost a neighbor with her, and I have met Cindy originally through Toastmasters, which I have encouraged many of you to get involved with as well. It is an excellent organi organization. It's fantastic for improving your speaking, your confidence, your leadership skills, and I'm learning a lot through Toastmasters and highly recommend it to all of you who are wanting to improve in those areas for your business as well. And I am also in a business networking group with Cindy and really thankful to have her influence um, for myself in my business um, and also just to get to share a little bit of that with all of you. So thank you, Cindy, for being with us. I'm going to turn off my video as well as everyone else's videos and everyone again just so you know again is muted to make sure that we can um, hear Cindy without any background noise and if you do have any questions um, you can put those in the chat box if you are joining us on zoom or you can put those in the comments if you are with us on Facebook and without further ado I am going to stop the videos and allow Cindy to cover this topic for us. Thank you so much, Cindy. Thank you, Crystal, and good evening, everyone. Welcome to Millennials, who they are and how to engage them. We're gonna learn a lot about the different generations in this talk today. But of course, the Millennials are different. And I love this cartoon. At my desk, working the grind, work swag, forever young, because 
we all, I think, have a tendency to use our cell phones like that now. So our objectives are to learn how and why millennials are different than other generations, to build rapport, communication, collaboration with the millennials by understanding their basic needs, consider and identify potential problems for an organization of any kind when millennials fail to communicate with the other generations effectively. Discover 10 ways that millennials will change the workplace, actually change the world. And then tips for keeping millennials engaged. And after this webinar, Crystal will be providing for you a sheet on those tips for keeping millennials engaged. So let's look at what has happened with the populations. Right now, we can see that the silent generation, the green line that you see, the traditionalists, there are less and less of them. However, they are living longer because we have people that are 100 years old and older more than any other time in history, except for the Bible days, but in history now. Then we see that the boomers are now, the gold line there, are starting to retire about age 65, okay? So they are coming out. There's about 65 million of those. Now we have the millennials at 81 million coming in. And there were so few Gen X, see the light green? So very few Gen X around that now there's a gap. There's a gap where we don't have enough millennials to fill in the jobs that are out there. So right now, the oldest millennials are 38. But let's look at this next chart in regards to women versus men. So what you see is at the top, you see where there are very few traditionalists, but they are going all the way up. And this figure does keep getting higher right now. We do have some that are 120 years old. I know we just lost one of those the other day. Then with our boomers right now, they're age 53 to 71. Then, and you see that how far out that goes, that fit, see the middle there where you see 55 to 59, where you have the majority of the boomers. Then you see Gen X, and you notice that that really goes in. Then you see the millennials. And one of the things I want you to notice, age 20 to 24 right now, you see that there are more men than there are women at that age. But then as you go further down, evens out a little bit more, we still have a little bit more men. So our oldest millennials, 36 to 17, actually it's 38, but the youngest ones that are still being called millennials are really not millennials. We had started calling them Generation Z, but I'm not sure they haven't defined it completely. But typically there's 20 years between each of the different generations. But the youngest last group of millennials start at 18 really right now. So in the millennials, the job tenure is no shorter than any prior generation, really. And with millennials, there are even more that are staying on. Now, if we look at millennials in the workforce right now, 40% of our workforce out there, and that includes your organization, 40% are millennials. But by 2020, it's going to be even higher. It's going to be 46% at that time. So millennials are getting into the management positions. Millennials versus other generations. This is the first time in history that we've had four generations side by side in the workplace. And that makes for some really interesting sales and 
communicating. So that's what we're going to learn tonight is a lot about that. We need to be aware of the changing demographics that are being brought in because of the technology and because of the, in, the innovation of the millennials. Know the impact it's going to have in the workplace, and that includes your organization. How does it affect your sales and your success? And increase personal competency in the communication and the management of any millennials that are under you. So we must, we must promote mentoring and teamwork because as you'll find out later, millennials are all about the teamwork. Now we all know that a generation is shaped by all of the things that have happened, the events and the circumstances at certain phases in our life, beginning with childhood. It's what makes us, it's what defines us. So let's start with the traditionalists, our oldest generation right now. They were born before 1945. They experienced the Great Depression. And you all have seen a little bit of that, like for example, what happened in Puerto Rico where people had to be in lines for days waiting for gasoline. They don't have any food. Uh, things are being rationed. That's what the Great Depression was like. And there was World War II. Here we are sitting there afraid we're gonna have World War III. Well, they were actually in a world war. And then there was the Korean War that they also lived through. So their heroes were John Wayne, because Westerns were such a big thing, and Joe DiMaggio, because America was all about baseball. That was the biggest sport. Then you have your baby boomers. They were born between 1945 and 1964. They experienced more of the suburban sprawl, all of the getting the houses away from the cities. It was the explosion of the television. Yes, they had these enormous television sets that sat on the ground with enormous tubes and they started in black and white and then went to color. It was the Vietnam era and everything was love and peace, make love, not war. And we had our hippies and we had a drug movement at that time. And then we had Watergate. We had the first inkling of crooked politicians. And the heroes for the baby boomers, Martin Luther King and Dr. Spock, the man that created the timeout. So we went from this, I don't know if any of you on the phone can remember this and bag phones, but yes, this is our cell phone of the time, to this, the iWatch which you can make calls, read email, control music, manage Instagram photos, keep up with your workout, pay for your groceries, open your hotel room door, close your garage doors, uh, turn off and on your lights in your house and even your Christmas tree. Generation X was born between 1964 and 1980. They shared Sesame Street, MTV, PCs, soaring divorce, divorce rates, so they were the first latchkey kids that would actually come home and not have their mom there or their dad. Their heroes were Michael Jordan and Bill Gates. And please note, both Steve Jobs and Bill Gates are Generation X. They were the ones that started this technology revolution. So with our millennials right now, as I said, there's about 40 years all grouped together, uh, born after 1980. They experienced the development of the digital camera. Now, nobody even thinks about the digital camera anymore because so quickly after that came our cell phones and then the ability to take pictures and then the increase of all the pixels so that now the pictures we take with our cell phones are even better than the digital cameras. Social media, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, uh, Instagram, YouTube, where we could actually see videos. We could actually, we didn't need MTV, we had YouTube. We can watch every kind of music video we want on there. And the worst, 9-11. 9-11 changed 
so much. And that happened to the millennials as children. Somebody actually hurt Americans. And it was so frightening. You had Katrina and you had increased diversity. Their hero, President Barack Obama. He brought a whole new level of people being equal and civil because millennials are so global minded and so accepting of all people, which is a wonderful thing. Their characteristics, they are entrepreneurial, whether they are working for someone or not. Very smart and business savvy. So if there's anybody you want on your team, it's millennials because they automatically think that way. They are the most ethically and racially diverse. They accept all people. They are very impatient because they're used to having things so fast. If they were around back in the days of my trying to teach salespeople using a 25 megahertz laptop, they'd scream and run from the building. They are very team oriented. They want to be around smart, innovative, young people like themselves. It doesn't necessarily young, but people that are open minded. They are extremely confident because they know that they can look up anything that they need in a moment's notice. They can watch YouTube and figure out how to do things. They are extremely confident. They have conventional values, which is wonderful. Their conventional values are actually a little bit more than Gen X, which is awesome. They're watching their money. They already have savings. They, are, they know how to manage money a little bit better than the past two generations. They are instant minded and they are instant minded because they automatically think, boom, I can go to YouTube and watch how to do it. Boom, I can find it on the internet. They don't even think about it. They just automatically Google it while you're talking. Whereas the other generations, especially boomers and traditionalists will say, you know, I think I have a book about that. Well, they can pull the book up straight from Audible and listen to it <laughs> and it because the older generations weren't born into that, they don't think about that. They are global oriented. No other time in history have we been able to just pick up the phone or be online and automatically connect with somebody that's in a completely different country, maybe even doing the same job as we are. It's amazing. You can connect with any continent. You can Talk to people in Australia and find out what they're doing and how they're selling your product. Here is a perfect example of how brilliant these millennials are. This is Christopher Gray. He had a single mom and she did not have enough money to send him to college. So he went out on the internet and began searching for scholarships. He found himself let's say $1.3 million that he could apply for, for scholarships. So he chose one and he went to Harvard. While at Harvard, he and his roommate got together and created an app so that other students like him didn't have to do what he did. You put in all your information at one time, it goes out, searches the entire internet and brings back to you all of the scholarships that you qualify for. Now, Scholarly is not the only program like that now, but he developed it, he sold it, and he's a multimillionaire and he's already started other apps. The early influences on millennials, as I said before, 9-11. I know how much it shook up my, uh, some, he's in between Gen X and millennial, but he was in New York when that happened. As a matter of fact, he was supposed to start his first day on the job in that building and was late for work his first day on the job. And the subway wouldn't even let them out. They put them on the other side of New York. School shootings. I, I can't even imagine. I can remember doing drills for hurricanes and uh, all kinds of things of that nature, but never ever for a school shooting. And it's, it's sad, but now 
schools are able to protect themselves a little bit better as we just saw recently. The Apple iPad, can you imagine not having to lug tons and tons of books around? Now everything you need is right there on an iPad. The globalization, truly being connected to countries around the world, being able in a classroom to Skype in with a whole other classroom on the other side of the world and be able to talk to people, fascinating. The Gulf of Mexico oil spill, when that oil spill happened, it was, I feel like, one of the biggest catalysts to push up the fact that we've got to take care of our Earth. And millennials, as well as Gen Xers, care about our Earth. They, had, had, they have made some tremendous changes to help us protect this Earth. And we need to do even more so that climate change doesn't continue to affect us all. Then there was the Boston Marathon bombing, which was just horrendous and hurt so many people. I feel sorry for millennials. I feel like they've lived in a world that is frightening, and yet they still have confidence and they still move ahead. And that's amazing. That's resilience. We did see Osama bin Laden get killed. So the man that caused the 9-11 attack was taken from this earth. And then Obama being president, someone that showed class and civility and manners, and I'll say that again, and manners. <laughs> uh, he, having someone of a different race be our president, brought a whole new level of equality and globalism to our world. So with millennials, the hierarchies have to disappear. They want to work in communities of mutual interest and passion. They don't like structured hierarchies. So people that manage them will have to change so that they look more like, <laughs> like Facebook and less like a pyramid structure we're used to. And we know that there are certain hierarchies, but we don't have to feel that way. If we are in this together and we do this together and we learn together, that's what's important. So millennials, they are excellent, excellent at multitasking because they think so fast. They're very entrepreneurial. Whatever you give them, they will take it on as their own as long as they feel included in what is happening and the changes that need to be made. They are goal-oriented, probably more goal-oriented than any other because their goals are the success of the company. Previous generations, the goals were, for example, with boomers, to see themselves get higher up get the title and have more ceiling tiles <laughs> instead of what they could do to help the company. They are very eager to learn new skills. They like to participate rather than lead. They want to be a part of a team. They communicate best by text and email. And Crystal and I were talking about that right before this. And really what we need to do is to ask people, how do you like to be communicated with? So when you're dealing with your team, make sure you ask the individual, how do you like to be communicated with? It's interesting, I'm a baby boomer, but I do have a millennial and a Gen Xer, and I text. Occasionally I email, but I mostly text. We communicate on Facebook, we communicate on Instagram, but even my clients like to text because it's easier. And I don't know anybody in my circle that likes to receive voicemails. As a matter of fact, they don't even leave them. The only people that leave voicemails right now is occasionally an older client or telemarketers. They have the best family, and work-life balance. The Gen Xers started it, but the millennials took it to a new level. And kudos to them because they watched their baby boomer parents work and work and work only to be let go by these big corporations. And what did that do? <laughs> it just kind of 
destroyed everything that they that they were used to because they were used to just working themselves to death both the traditionalists and the baby boomers but now the millennials there's time to work and there's time for family when you leave work they leave work they try not to let it interfere with their family life and that gives them more relaxation more time to enjoy life Here are some actual quotes from millennials. I want to feel valued. I want to be given tasks that allow me to stretch myself to the full extent of my abilities and by doing so, develop my skills. And that applies to anything that we do. Every one of us comes to this earth wanting to feel appreciated and to feel important. What motivates me is good working environment with friendly colleagues. If your workplace becomes your second home, you would want to give it your best. And I think that's true about anything that we undertake. If it becomes a, a whole new family to us, just like the, the organization of doTERRA, it, it is like family because that's what I saw at the retreat. Everybody wanting everybody to do their best and to be successful. What motivates me? Recognition for my hard work and being able to really see the difference my work makes to others. And I'll tell you what, if there's anybody that can see what they do that makes it others, makes a difference to other people's lives is the stuff that the doTERRA team does. Because what you sell is so essential to people. It has been proven for many, many years before we even took over the Americas from the Indians. That's what they used. And isn't it uh, ironic that that's what we need to go back to because it's so much better than too many of the pharmaceutical drugs that we use now. So how many employers do you expect to have in your career? Now, this is your millennials, and, and typically they say two to five. And if you're like me, I was still working when I began my business. And I did have two to five <laughs> employers. And, but understand that the other generations, they had one. They only had one employer. So many of them worked for so many years only to be let go before they were ready to retire. So we have to have those multiple streams of income and work our way into what it is that we have a passion for. And it was interesting to see that the number one thing that inf influenced most people in their job is the opportunity for personal development because that's how millennials feel. That's how we should all feel, to learn something new and have that knowledge be so good that we want to share it with other people. The other is the reputation of the organization. And I was just amazed when Crystal told me about the reputation of doTERRA and how it all got started. And that's just amazing. And it made me feel good to be a part of teaching you all. Working with strong coaches and mentors. And the way that your organization is structured, that's what you're doing. You're working with people like Crystal and the others that are helping you. Somebody is always there to help you. Any questions you have, any information that you need, you have mentors. And for millennials, that is so attractive. So if you're trying to get them on your team, that's what you're going to say. Hey, look, we've got people that are going to be with you the whole way. They will help you. They're going to help you learn it. We're, they're going to be there to answer your questions. So what millennials value at work? I want you to look at that. Meaningful work is more important than high pay because that is what matters. When we are helping people, and we are doing something, we're making our living at something that truly helps people, then we're doing meaningful work. And that's why you're in what you're in, because it makes a difference. It makes a difference for you and the people that you're doing it for. So when we're managing millennials, we need to challenge the group.
they welcome the responsibility. So we need to mentor them and give them the responsibility. Help them out, but don't do it for them. Give them the responsibility. They enjoy rewards for their accomplishments in the way that your organization is set up. You guys get great rewards. Effective management statements. You will be collaborating with other bright, creative people. And I'll tell you what, at that retreat, there were a great deal of bright, creative people. You have really rescued the situation with your commitment. And anything that we do, we have to be committed to it. Heart, soul, and mind. And if we are, that is what makes us a success. Because we all know that hard work is what brings us success. If we keep our nose out there, we really work hard and we know what we're doing is making a difference in people's lives. That's what keeps us going. That's what keeps our commitment. They prefer collaborative team efforts with projects. And you guys are already built into a team, which is awesome. They do need orientation training. They are the knowledge seekers. You need to let them know how to do it. Keep them busy. Assign mentors. Some people need a little bit more hand-holding than other people. And we have to determine that. We have to ask those questions. Would you like someone to, to check in with you more often? What would you like? So part of the how to communicate with them in regards to text and email and everything else, we also need to communicate how often would you like me to call you? How often would you like to have a meeting? How often do you think we should do this or that? That's what mentors do. A personal development plan, where should they be? It's kind of like project management. I think millennials were born knowing project management. They have to know those milestones ahead of time. Be transparent with them. Let them know what's going on at all times. And give them the opportunity to make a difference. Provide the latest technology, which I think that your organization has done a fabulous job with. And don't move too slowly. Don't, uh, a lot of times, a baby boomer or a traditionalist, they move slowly. They are used to doing things more slowly. They, they spread out meetings further apart. But don't do that with millennials because they move at a very much quicker pace. Core, the core values of millennials are essential. And I want you to look at what this first one is. Family. They always put family first. One of the things about being an entrepreneur is you truly do have time for your family because you work your work around your family. Trust. You have to be able to trust your teams and your mentors. Transparency always telling people the way it is. Understand that the traditionalists and the baby boomers grew up uh, like uh, mushrooms. <laughs> they were not allowed to know anything that was going on. They would hear something in the news before they heard something from the person they reported to. And that caused that mistrust at that time. So millennials coming along and having seen that, they need trust and transparency. They love the sociability aspect of it. Now, this may seem like a misnomer because of what you've heard about millennials before, that millennials just want to keep their face in the phone and that type of thing, but that's not true. They are global. They love the sociability of the team. They love diversity. They want different people of different ages, of different ethnicities to all chime in on what should be done because that is different than just a bunch of old uh, baby boomers <laughs> telling everybody what to do because they're going to look at it from a totally different aspect. The traditionalists, the baby boomers, the Gen X, each of those generations are going to look at things differently. So, Millennials want the diversity of all of that because they know it will bring experience and knowledge 
together with the innovation, and then we will get terrific solutions. Optimism. It is important to them. Look at what they grew up in. Pretty depressing, uh, but they're so optimistic because they believe that they will make the changes, and I believe them too. I wish more of them would get in the Senate <laughs> so that we can have that. So they are very optimistic about where the earth can go and where the people in it can go. And they have a civic duty, which is wonderful. They give to their community. They take part in their community. Right here in my neighborhood, I see it all the time. The young millennials that have children now and putting them in Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts and doing things with the city and the cleanup projects and everything. I think it's wonderful. So they believe in that civic duty and achievement because they truly are entrepreneurial and they believe in that achievement. I think that we all do. It's that sense of accomplishment that we need to make us feel important and to make us feel appreciated. So let's talk about the basic human needs, regardless of the, your generation. We all want to be heard. And those of you that were at the retreat, we talked about listening, how we listen to people. 80% of the time, we need to be letting someone talk. 20% of the time, we should be asking open-ended questions. Open-ended questions are questions that cannot be answered with a single yes or no. So listen to people because you will hear anything that you need to hear as long as you are listening and then you can formulate your response to them. But whenever you listen to someone, be sure to ask them one question about what they were talking about before you say what you want to say. Try not to interrupt. Try to ask them a question about what they were talking about. That lets the other person know that you've been listening to them. We all want to be understood. We want to make sure that somebody understands where we're coming from. And to do that, we should ask clarifying questions. Or we state back to them. So what I hear you saying is that lets you know that you're on the same page with them. Because how many times have we thought we understood what somebody said only for it to not be what they said and we had to do it again. So always clarify that you understand what someone's saying. To be valued, to truly be valued and understand that not just the, you know, the millennials <laughs> wanting to be valued, but your older generations, they have so much knowledge and so much experience. And right now, so many of them have been pushed out of work and they weren't ready to retire yet. There are 75 year olds still working and extremely sharp of mind. They want to be valued. They've learned lessons that they can impart to us. Feeling respected. You always hear that respect has to be earned, but there's a certain amount of just human respect, human decency for another human being. We need to show that respect for other people in that regard and being polite to them, not cutting them off and not ignoring them. And the freedom of choice. We all want to have the freedom to choose what we want to do, to choose where we want to live, what we what kind of profession we want to be and we all want freedom and we also want to have fun there is nothing worse <laughs> than not having fun and it's one of the things that the millennials are better at than the baby boomers and the traditionalists because we didn't allow ourselves to have that much fun and we have learned from them that it is it's so important to enjoy every day regardless of what's going on and a sense of belonging, being a part of a community. We can do that in our work, and we can do that where we live by becoming involved. And we all want to feel that we are a part of something bigger than ourselves and that we're contributing to those around us. 
So the keys to overcoming some of these differences that do divide us, understanding the more that we truly try to understand somebody else's point of view and allow them to be different, the better we can communicate. We can, by saying to them, I can see that you might feel that way. I feel differently. And just agree to disagree, but allow them to put their point of view. Don't ever tell someone they're wrong or don't tell them they don't know what they're talking about. Allow them to have their own point of view. Doesn't mean you have to agree with them. Again, you can say, well, let's just agree to disagree. affect us or our family, we can't find forgiveness at that moment. But the only thing that that does is it hurts us, not that other person. For us to forgive is to release ourself of that burden. And we have to learn to do that regardless of what was done to us. It's the way that it is. For, not forgiving only hurts us us. So what can we do to positively affect the interaction? Provide constant feedback and information to Gen X and millennials. What happens with your baby boomers and your traditionalists? Remember I told you that they're used to things being done slowly? So back in the what they're used to is, oh, well, we'll have a meeting on that next Friday. And your Gen X and Millennials are saying, but no, I need the information right now so I can finish what I'm doing. Because they're used to multitasking and they're used to thinking fast and doing things fast. But your other generation is used to gathering more information and going slower to find it out. So we've got to remember to provide constant feedback and information. And to say to them, I need to do some more research, so let me look up a couple of things. As I find it out, I will give it to you. Not wait until you get it all. So that's a compromise. Allow the traditionalists and baby boomers time to digest information. Millennials and Gen Xers think so fast. Baby boomers and traditionalists, we need to think about the information a little bit more slowly. It takes us a little bit longer to look things up. It takes us time to think about it and we're, we're comparing it to our experiences. So allow time. Foster a community of teamwork. That's what especially Gen X and Millennials want. They want to do it in teamwork. Remember that your traditionalists and your baby boomers were kind of kept in silos where they had to do things on their own and we're not as used to the teamwork. Totally different now. So we need to have that community of teamwork. Understand that the traditionalists and baby boomers need the, the hierarchical structure. We're so used to, well now, if this happens, who do I go to next? And if that happens, then who do I go to next? And then, because we wouldn't go to the sides and ask our friends on Facebook and Instagram and everywhere else. No, we went to only to the person ahead of us. So understand that's what they're used to. And if we say to them, oh, but you could just, just ask one of your teammates. They, they'll say, oh, no, I, I can't do that. <laughs> so we have to recognize that about them and then proceed accordingly. So it may be that you ha are the one that has to deliver that information to them. Communicate face to face with traditionalists and baby boomers. Many, many of them don't like text messages and don't want an email. They want to see your face. They want to meet with you. So this is where the compromise might be some FaceTime, some Zoom, some Skype, 
whatever it takes to see that person face to face. And if they're on your team and they're located far away, this is what they may need. So be aware of that. They are used to either having a meeting in person or being face to face. And thank goodness for our technology today, we can satisfy that with that type of meeting. But understand if they also want to meet with you in person occasionally. Use technology to communicate with Gen X and Millennials, including texting. So if we ask someone, how do you be like to be communicated with, and they say texting, and you say, well, I'm not that great at texting, then buy an iPhone and learn to use your voice, <laughs> and it'll text for you. But we, we need to try to satisfy them, or they may get very frustrated with us. I know my kids did until I started texting back. Ask traditionalists and baby boomers to apply their experience to a problem. So millennials think so fast and they know they have access to information, but what they don't have access to is true things through experiences that they've been through. There are things that your traditionalists and your baby boomers have been through that they know, okay, if we do it this way, this is gonna happen. If we do it that way, this is gonna happen. If you try to do this marketing, let me tell you what it's gonna do. And they'll compare it to something current day as well. But that experience is invaluable and we need to turn to those people and ask those questions. Ask Gen X and Millennials to apply their fresh, fast-paced, and technological outlook to a problem. I know that a lot of traditionalists and baby boomers <laughs> like, are pretty stuck in their ways, but we need to learn to open up because it is amazing. The idea ideas that come up. Look at Christopher Gray. I mean, he was just looking for scholarships for himself. And look what he did with it to help other people. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. And there's no telling what kind of marketing innovation you can come up with or some kind of project or some kind of social thing that you come up with that'll get people out and trying your products. Require, let's see, why are several generations in the workplace beneficial? It requires a work culture that recognizes and appreciates the different perspectives, styles, and opinions. So whatever team that you are on, you've got to show that appreciation for people's different things. Think about the fact that the last time someone said to you, wow, that's a great idea. Do you know what that feels like when somebody says that to you? The next time that you say that to someone, watch their face, watch their eyes light up, watch that smile just spread across their face. You have made them feel important and appreciated when you say those simple words, what a great idea. The difference in perspectives are sought out, valued, respected, and put to use because everybody's going to have a different way. Don't simply disrespect the fact that you don't agree with it. If there's any inkling of that it might work, try it. Use them. If you're going to ask for people's opinions, Take some part of it and use it to make that person feel respected. Management taps into the best productivity and creativity of everyone. So when you're with your team and you're having those calls, you want to come up with something. Listen to what people say and say, well, so-and-so, what do you think about that? Or so-and-so, what do you think about that? Especially those that kind of sit in the back real quiet waiting for everyone else. It's part of their personality, but draw them out to make them feel important and involved. The team together is more flexible than any one individual telling people how to do it, how to sell it, how to market it. Decisions are stronger because then they're broader based. Everybody brings their collective knowledge together and it can, it can produce some amazing results. 
the team becomes even more innovative when that happens. When you're involving everybody and ask them how they feel about things, then because you are accepting and using their ideas, they'll come to you more. They start really working on creative ways to make things happen. And that's what you want. The team can meet the needs of any diverse work environment. When you've got that innovation going on, it doesn't matter how many generations are in there, how many different types of people with all their different moods and attitudes. If there's a an uplifting, creative, motivated feeling every time you have meetings, you are going to get some amazing results. So how do we engage millennials? Good communication skills and an open door policy. And that means whenever they have a question, you make yourself available as quickly as possible to help them with what they're asking. Being aware of similarities and the differences. Having your team learn about the similarities and differences, just like we're talking about today. Make sure that anybody you work with understands the differences of the generations. People don't know what they don't know. Share with them what you've learned. Understand the triggers within each generation. As you can imagine, when people talk about war, it really triggers your traditionalists. With your baby boomers, when you talk about younger people being promoted over the older people, it's a trigger for them. They've worked hard to where they're going to get. And with baby boomers, another trigger is, what do you mean you're leaving at five o'clock? Well, <laughs> because they can and they should. <laughs> but we just need to be aware of how that gener what the, that generation is used to. Having your communication strategies in place. Again, we talked about that. Asking them, how do you like to be communicated with? How often do you want to be communicated with? How often do you want to meet via Skype, FaceTime, Zoom, or meeting in person? have that communication strategy in place. So many things do not happen because of this one thing. They lose interest and they drop off simply because you did not show them importance. Encourage one-on-one -on -one building through mentoring. Find opportunities to share their values and their needs. What are their values? What do they need? What do they need to get out of this? Fine, well, compensation packages don't really apply, but what does apply? Letting them know what they're going to receive at each step. Create individual development plans so that they know what's going on. Now, with your organization, most of that's spelt out, but remind people, make sure they understand where they are and what they need to do to get to the next level. So how are they going to change the world? Here's how they're going to change the world. They are going to hold only productive meetings. They are not there just to have a meeting. They are there to either learn something new, discuss some ideas, or create new things. Shorten the workday. Bring back administrative assistance. And isn't it great in our world today that we can go out on Fiverr or any of these other programs and have people help do some of the things we need to do for just a few dollars? Redefined retirement. Uh, find real mentors. Let's see. Promote based on mission. Continue to value what our parents have to offer. Remember that valuing our parents, these people that have the knowledge and have the experience, ask your parents too, hey, mom, dad, what do you think about? Enjoy higher, we can make a lot of money <laughs> if we're out there doing new and creative things. And let's see, what do they want? Great relationship with the person who they're reporting to. Strong individual corporate value alignment open communication, 
mobility, access to technology, multitasking. A lot of these really have to do with work more so than organization. But immediate gratification and feedback is essential when you're dealing with millennials. Some structure and supervision, but not micromanagement. They just need to know what the structure is and that they can go to somebody to get the answers that they need and they need the transparency. So millennials need to feel that they're making a real contribution through the company and a contribution to the world fits, which fits directly into your organization. They want to work in groups and have strong mentors. Personal development plans are essential to retain them, which you all have already laid out. And communication preferences must be taken into consideration and communicated to the other generations that you're working with. So in your team, you have a lot of different ages, a lot of different generations. Just make sure that you know how they all like to be communicated with. So that concludes our millennial talk today. I hope you've learned some really great things and we will be sending you the tip sheet. But does anybody have any questions? Thank you so much, Cindy. I haven't seen any questions come through, but I'll give everybody a moment to decide if they want to type one in. And I'll just comment that I got so much out of this for myself and leading our organization and also working with customers. And I really appreciate it. I have a lot of notes jotted down. I'm excited to get the handout that I can pass along as well. And some of my favorite points that you brought out that really apply to us had to do with respect, value, and fun. <laughs> because yeah. I know that no matter which generation you're from, you want to be respected for what you can bring to the group. You want to be valued and know that you can contribute. Um, and that the element of fun, I do really think the millennials bring in. I think the other generations you referenced can tend to be all work and no play at times yeah. and compartmentalize that too much. And I know the millennials that I've worked with on our team really have reminded me that this should be fun and it is fun. We have a really cool, really fun job with what we do with our businesses. And I love that sense of community and culture that we get from having fun together as well as working hard together and balancing that and everyone contributing and giving back and using their gifts and talents um, to contribute, but knowing that doTERRA as a larger organization is giving back in so many huge ways all around the world it really makes people feel good about what they're supporting, the products that we're using, the ethics of the company itself. Um, that's been huge, I know, with, with these younger generations, um, understanding just exactly how the inner workings are being operated and that they're ethical. Um, so I really appreciate those points that you brought out and I know for me personally as I'm working with people in generations that came before me, I'll be remembering to give them that time to digest, to communicate face to face when possible and when I'm working with generations younger to really give them that instant feedback and communicate with them electronically and know that that's okay and that's actually probably what they prefer. But definitely going back to finding out what works for each person to communicate best for their personality or their preferences. And it's interesting too how this is all tying together with some things we've talked about before. We've done a lot of works with, work with Strengths Finder. We have a Strengths Finder coach on our team. And I love that you brought out some of those points about learning our similarities and differences, knowing our strengths and learning how to really maximize our strengths as we work together as a team. Um, something else that I thought of was a Toastmasters event I attended where um, the speaker works closely with Gary Chapman and has written a book with him. And I picked up one of the books there, the love language, the five love languages of appreciation in the workplace. And I have not read it yet. I actually loaned it to a team member who's reading it first, um, but it made me realize I need to read that book because what you said applies, and I'm sure that that book would give a lot of insight, and that would be something I'd love for us, those who are listening, to do together, to pick up that book, The Five Love Languages of Appreciation in the Workplace, and think about how that applies to you, your team members, and even your customers, how they can feel 
your appreciation for them and what really speaks to them as far as uh, as far as appreciation and what motivates team members um, going forward having a communication strategy in place and an appreciation strategy even as well so I hope that you will put those things into practice those who are listening and I really appreciate again just what you've added to us I hope we will go back and watch this again and listen again and take notes and not just listen but as always I encourage you to jot down a few things you can do differently with the information that you've learned how you can communicate differently how you can operate differently with your team with your organization think about the people you're working with both customers and team members who are from different generations and work toward understanding and really bridging that gap that we can get closer and closer to understanding each other and working together we have those common goals that we want to be healthier to help each other be healthier physically and also through the business help each other be um, financially in better shape as well the opportunity that we have is too important to let petty differences get in our way and not work toward overcoming those together so again thank you Cindy I don't know if you have any thing to add I'm going to check for questions really quickly oh, I do see one someone typed in uh, what could be and this might be something I can address too but what could be the best way to talk to Millennials when presenting doTERRA oils and I think this goes back to having a communication strategy and also diversifying the way that you communicate so we've traditionally taught that we do group classes maybe a lunch and learn in an office setting or uh, after work or on the weekend in someone's home and we may need to really think outside of that box I know more people are doing one-on-ones like a coffee or lunch meeting if a person really wants that individual attention rather than a group setting some people are doing more and more on social media to reach out there's you know facebook classes and insta stories and things like that to get the message out about the oils themselves i think just diversifying the ways that we reach out and working again with each person because i know plenty of millennials who love to come to a class and learn live in a group setting but i know some just like with the other generations who would much prefer to be one-on-one -on -one, and that might be more of a personality than a generational difference some people don't want to go back out again after they get home from work and they would be glad to participate in an online class um, I don't know if you have any ideas as far as the best way to talk to Millennials when presenting something for from a sales perspective Cindy well one of the things that I noticed that Millennials like is they don't like long classes and mm. they really like short classes so what I would encourage them to do is to do some of them in short 30-minute bursts mm -hmm. and they're more than willing to take a lunch time to do that as well as 30 minutes in the evening versus an entire hour and so you can cover specific oils during that time so if you set up little chunks of time where you're covering certain types of oils uh, that would be very appealing even to people of my age but Millennials especially because they're so conscious about their time between work and family yes absolutely and a basic class that some of us have learned through going through some training with the top uh, person in our entire company Elise Shadavi is really perfect for that she teaches to do a class in 30 to 40 minutes and not try to teach everything everything you know in one sitting basically and then to follow up with continuing education classes for those who want to get deeper and delve further and that's really perfect for what you're saying a shorter class um, also the Facebook classes that I've done I break up into small segments so instead of one hour all at once in an online setting it would take about 15 minutes a day for four or five days to sit down and then if they do get busy and can't log in that day or the next day to the class it doesn't take that much time to catch up you can watch a couple of segments or read a few posts and I've kind of just diversified the way that I do that so I have online classes like this but then I also have Facebook classes where there's a mixture of posts and videos and they're just a few minutes each and that is something I'm encouraging people to do if you if you just choose to do videos such as Facebook live 
really keep it short and sweet. Um, nobody's going to stick with you for 40 minutes on a Facebook Live. People are just busy and have other things to do. But if they see it's just a few minutes, a, a bite size, here's how to use breathe oil in three minutes or less, um, they'll be much more likely to stick with you. So you're on one topic and keeping it short, like Cindy said, I think is a fantastic way to do that is work toward getting your class down to that 30 to 40 minute time frame. And it, it will mean cutting out, um, talking about certain oils. It will mean backing off on the amount of time you talk about certain topics. But always remember, this is not going to be the last time you talk to this person. This is just the intro. You can fill in blanks and give more information in your follow-up. Um, so don't think you have to share everything you've learned about essential oils when you've been maybe learning for three or four years and you want to fit it all into a class. I know how tempting that is, but you see people's eyes glaze over and that's not a good sign. <laughs> the other thing I'd like to share, Crystal, mm -hmm. is what I shared with you. Before I met Crystal, I had a Toastmaster friend of mine that was starting to sell doTERRA. And she invited me again and again and again to come to a class. And, you know, I never went, but there was one thing that I, actually not one, I found out so many things when I went to the retreat. And one of those was the weight loss area. If she had just mentioned that to me on the message part of Facebook where she always invited me, if she had said weight loss, I would have been there in a heartbeat. So remember those topics that are always popular. Yes, and I think that's a great point to make sure you are diversifying the areas of health that you talk about. Maybe what someone else is looking for has nothing to do with the reason you were looking for doTERRA when you found it. And again, meeting people's needs and getting to know just like we want to know how they best communicate what's important to them and the way they communicate what's important to them and make it personal. Even back five years ago when I was planning my very first doTERRA class, I talked to people individually and found out if I didn't already know what were some of their health needs or concerns or what might really speak to them when I invited them to the class and I would say, I'll make sure we spend a couple of minutes talking about that specific health goal that you have um, with the person who's teaching the class when back when Tanya was teaching my first couple of classes I think that's really important to change up your um, Your presentation and the topics you're highlighting on Facebook and, and other places on social media Making sure that you're really diverse in that but also making it personal to the people that you're inviting And if you don't know what they're interested in feel free to ask people love to be asked what area of health interests you most or what area of taking better care of yourself physically emotionally mentally would interest you and find out what some of their health goals or concerns are and cater it to them all right well it doesn't look like we have any more questions we're getting a lot of good feedback and comments and lots of thanks for you cindy so we really appreciate you taking the time to do this and i look forward to working with you and learning from you more in the future. Thank you all so much for participating. As usual, I will be posting this on our YouTube channel within just the next 24 hours, and there will be a prize drawing form going out for one uh, winner who watches and then comments with some feedback. So be watching for that Google form. I look forward to talking to you all soon. In the meantime, I just hope you know how very grateful I am for each of you, how thankful I am for this team, what a blessing it is to my life. I know the products and the business are a blessing to your life as well. And I am full of gratitude for each of you and for our just beloved company and amazing products. As we go into Thanksgiving week, I just wish you the best and Hope you have a wonderful time with your loved ones, your family, your friends, enjoying the blessings and the gratitude as well. With that, I will end for this evening, and I will look forward to talking to you soon. Have a great night. Thank you again, Cindy. Thank you, Crystal. Goodbye, everyone. Good night.